This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. A couple of years ago, I was on a trip to Rome and I made a video sharing with you what was in my daily bag that I used to carry around with me that for not very much weight, I was able to shoot both stills and video at a high quality. But since then, the contents of that bag and even the bag itself have changed quite a lot. And in a recent video I made on the Ricoh GR2, I asked if you'd be interested to know what I carry around with me every day. And a lot of you in the comments said, yes, please make that video. So I thought, seeing as I'm stuck at home with a serious case of man flu, if you're willing to put up with a slightly scratchy, gravelly voice, now might be a good time to make that video. One thing that hasn't changed is my obsession with working out how I can carry less but do more day to day. And I think I've come up with a bag that is lightweight, it's not cumbersome or heavy, but it has a great little mix of gear in it that I can shoot and do everything that I do, the different genres of stills, filming, capturing audio, even doing the admin work that I need to do day to day without any compromises in a very small carry. So let's jump in. So this is my daily bag. It is a, I always have to check, it's a Pro Tactic BP250. Uh, low pro make these the biggest reason I went for this actually is because it's a it's a narrower bag than most the one problem I had when I moved from DSLRs to uh, full frame mirrorless is mirrorless cameras are they're less bulky less big and the bags I used to use were much deeper camera bags so what it meant is when I put these little Sony's in these bags they used to bounce around a lot in their spaces but because these are thinner bags it means that they actually fit quite snugly and they don't move around as much inside so that's why I went for this particular range there's little things I like about it um, there's a lot of entry ports for it so you can take your camera out of the top here which is actually a nice hard shell on top which is good for protection uh, you've also got side ports as well so you could put cameras in both sides and be able to pull them out both sides really quickly without having to take the bag off and then the main access to the bag is actually in the back uh, against your against your back which is nice because a little bit of security means someone can't just open your whole bag while you're walking around because this is right against you uh, so that's really good and uh, it's nicely ventilated as well. I find, especially if you're walking around for street photography all day, little things like this really make a difference. It just means on a hot summer's day, you're not gonna sweat against the bag so much. So this is the bag that I decided to go with. Let me show you around inside. So this is my loadout. This is what I've decided to go with day to day to get as much done as possible with as little weight and carry as I can. My main camera, as you'll know now, is uh, the Sony a7 III. Uh, you can watch the video I made about why I switched over to this camera. Uh, I don't want to get into it here. The biggest reason that I went with this is because for my needs, this was the perfect middle ground for portability for both quality stills and quality video. If I wasn't a filmmaker as well, I probably wouldn't have gone with Sony. It was really because it could do both uh, equally as well. So that little Sony, uh, much lighter than the old 5Ds I used to use and the rest of it much smaller in the hand. Um, I bought a little strap off Amazon just to give me a little bit of security on this as well. The lens I have on here most often is this little plastic Samyang 35mm f2.8. It's a little plastic prime. Uh, it's very, very inexpensive as lenses go and most of my street photography is done with this combo. It means the camera is really small and light as well. I put this little setup against my friend's X-Pro2 with his 35mm f2 and this is actually smaller in the hand than that is, which I, which I thought was quite surprising. It means I can be fairly discreet with this, but the images out of this tiny little cheap lens are plenty sharp for what I need to do and uh, it means it's fairly inexpensive and the images are great. I have no issue with them. And most of the street photography you see on my accounts or that come out in the book every year from the Sony come through this lens. So uh, that's my main little street camera. When it comes to video, wanting to be able to film a video on the go, uh, the, my go-to lens at the moment is this. It's the Tamron 28 to 75 2.8. This lens is amazing. I mean, I know Technically speaking, the G Master 24 to 70 uh, from Sony is going to be a better lens, but it is twice as heavy. It's three times the price. And when it comes to video, I have been so impressed with this little lens and the quality of the images that come out of it. Uh, if you watch most of my videos at the moment, it's almost all being filmed on this lens. So if you like the quality of what you're seeing, it's down to this guy. I'm a big proponent of you don't need to buy 
the fanciest version of everything to be able to get good quality out of things. Buy the thing that works for you. This is lightweight. It's not nearly as, as heavy as the other one and the images are equally as sharp. It performs really well even in low light. I mean if you saw the recent video I did with Joshua Jackson, all the b-roll and the slow motion stuff you were seeing was shot at 1600 or 3200 ISO on the Sony through this lens mostly at 2.8 in the middle of the night in Soho and I couldn't have been happy with that b-roll. So I can film anything with this on the go. I could quickly uh, throw this on, film an interview with somebody, film b-roll, whatever I want just out of this lens and uh, the Sony that I've got in the bag already. The three wings of what I do are street photography, filmmaking and portraiture. So I wanted to have a portrait lens in here as well that I'd be happy to shoot with and as good as this Tamron is I don't really like the bokeh or the fall off uh, for portraits very much so I wanted to have another option. So I got this 55mm Zeiss 1.8 which is a gorgeous lens, it's not very heavy, it is a little bit pricey but beautiful for portraits. My portraits were already widening out from 85mm towards 50 anyway so getting something which was a 50mm just with that little tuck to 55 actually is a perfect all round portrait lens which I can do pretty much anything with. So anytime you see me shooting with the Sony in studios for portraits recently, the stuff that I'm posting portraiture with, you'll notice that I'm shooting almost everything now. Every portrait that I take on this little 55 lens and it's gorgeous, couldn't be happier with it. It's really, really good. I also carry an ND filter around with me. Uh, it's a variable ND filter. I use this for filming. So this is a 67 mil thread. Uh, which goes on the Tamron and I use this for filming and the reason for an ND filter and if you know about variable ND filters it just means that when you twist it you kind of cut the light in and out as you want and the reason you need this for filming in my mind is your shutter speed should always be uh, 1 over 50 if you're shooting at 25 frames a second which I do so because I've locked my shutter speed off and I want to be able to get shallow depth of field even in bright sunlight. It means it gives me less options for exposure and this gives me another way to cut the light back. I used to shoot portraits with variable ND filters as well but now I have moved to a system with uh, Godox lights which means I can use high speed sync which means I've got way more options for my shutter speed and I don't actually need uh, a variable ND filter for my Zeiss for my portrait lens anymore. I will do a video on the lighting kit that I'm putting together. It's a, it's a far more compact three light portrait light kit which fits in a nice little case uh, and I'll, because I want to do more videos on portraiture this year I'll share that little setup with you as well uh, very soon just to sort of gear us up to talking about portraits more. Um, another thing which is obviously really really key if you're making films is audio. Um, and I've moved to a much smaller microphone. The video that I did in Rome a few years ago where I showed you uh, my basic little kit had uh, the big Rode Video Mic Pro which was great, a really really good mic but I, you can't fit it in a little bag like this so I wondered if there was a smaller option and I found this little Rode mic uh, like a mini or I think it's a Rode Video Micro or something like that Video Micro, that's what it's called. A uh, much smaller little mic, it's not powered, so it's, it's not necessarily going to give you the same output or power or you're going to lose something somewhere. But to be honest, I plug this in and it's literally just mic in there. You uh, clip this inside the little cradle, you've got a, a proper wind jammer if you want it. And then this just sits uh, on, your, on your hot shoe mount on the top and jacks in the side for audio. I've done tests between the two. Yes, you can tell a little bit of difference, but I only use uh, this sort of microphone to capture real-time audio when I'm not using labs. It's in a pinch and I, to be honest, don't need super, super clean audio for that kind of stuff because everyone knows it's in a space and it's in a context anyway. And this is such a tiny little uh, mic to be able to take around with me. I've been really, really happy with this as something just to keep in my bag daily if I want to record audio on the go in a pinch. Um, then when I'm recording proper audio for uh, interviews and things like that where I really need to capture very, very crisp spoken word and this is what I'm doing right now as well. Uh, people ask about the audio. I use a Zoom H1 which is a great handy little audio recorder. It's got a great XY crossover mic on the top there which you can actually just use, sit out somewhere and it'll capture good stereo audio as it is right out the box here. Little micro SD card in the side and then I team that with the Rode SmartLav Plus and if you're using this with the Zoom you need this little connector on the end called an SC3 but when you team these together you can literally just pop this in the side like this put this in a pocket after you've hit record 
stick it on here like I've got one on here now and you get really good clean spoken word audio so right out the box I can have somebody you know mic'd up with a lav and I can be filming them I can be moving around them they can be moving far or close to me but I know that when I sync that audio that I've collected from them it's going to be clean no matter where they move or how they shift around uh, and that means I've got pretty much a good a good quality interview kit for wherever I go so that's pretty much in a very very small package a lot of audio options for me there uh, I've got a little bag for uh, USB cables to charge all of this stuff and everything else I need on the go plus a little collapsible plug so I can plug in my USB cables and everything else this also has extra batteries in it and other little bits as well I always keep a notebook uh, just a little notepad in here which I just, I, you know, writing down ideas or, you know, things for videos that I have coming up or ideas I have on the go. I like the idea of having something quite tactile that I can quickly just jot down ideas or, or draw a sketch or just something that's more creative than sort of punching in a note on your phone. Then I have uh, business cards. I always keep a few little mini business cards in here as well. It's just good if you're running around. I get these, uh, these little moo.com mini cards, details on the back some of your images on the front. It's really just good to always have something in a bag if someone says, oh, who are you, what do you do, that you can just stick a card in their hand. You don't have to give a big explanation. You've got links there that they can go and explore who you are afterwards. I then have in the back here, I have my uh, iPad Pro 10.5 uh, inches, the previous generation. And I've got it with this Logitech case. Uh, because it's got because the connectors on the side you actually clip it into the connectors magnetically and there's no lag when you're doing any typing which is really really good uh, um, this ends up being a workhorse for me it does pretty much everything because I've got the Apple pencil as well I can do some quite detailed even pressure sensitive editing I use uh, Lightroom on here a lot uh, it's great for that and I can answer emails I can do any kind of work that I need to do and I write scripts on this so for videos when I need to write something out I've got a whole video about this which you can check out as well about how I put together a script how I think about writing for videos that I'm going to produce I use an app called IA writer which I find really good so this ends up being my workhorse going around and also when I'm traveling I load up shows on this stuff that I want to watch I always keep uh, at least three or four or five movies that I bought as well which I find the cinematography really inspiring um, so at the moment I've got things like uh, I've got the previous Blade Runner the latest Blade Runner I've got uh, The Revenant which I think is a stunning visually stunning movie uh, and I've got um, Inglorious Bastards because I think it's storytelling wise it's absolutely a, a stunning movie I always keep stuff like that not necessarily to watch the whole movie but if I have you know 15 20 minutes where I'm waiting for public transport or something like that I might just watch a scene because I feel like keeping your 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 mind ticking over when it comes to storytelling your eyes visually stimulated when it comes to cinematography puts you in good stead for when you pick up a camera yourself and go out there to shoot so that just sits in the back here um, ends up being all my kind of uh, productive work and also a little bit of entertainment when I'm traveling around as well and the last thing that I have is uh, my Kindle and this I mean I absolutely love these things because and I understand people love the feel of books and it's you know the romantic feel of paper I totally get it but I always am reading three or four books at the same time and I can't carry three or four books around at the same time and I love the fact that with a Kindle not only can I take every book I'm reading currently I can take every book I've ever purchased with me on the go and when I'm reading books I often highlight sections or quotes you know I love a quote and there are uh, there's a section in this called clippings where you can go in and you can look at all the quotes that you've highlighted just in a stream and just flick through and that I find quite inspiring sometimes as well so this is really really good I find I read faster on a Kindle as well which is great I think this is the uh, previous generation paper white and I find these um, really really useful especially when traveling or running around anywhere I can pull out any book that I'm reading on the go so that is my setup for for traveling for day to day that I can film or I can shoot street or I can shoot portraits or I can do work or I can entertain myself all out of something that's a fairly small bag on the go. 
I think it's important in a video like this to make it clear that I'm not trying to sell you any of these products. In fact, I think if you just copy my choices here, you'll probably make some mistakes. You have to think it through for yourself. None of the brands that I mentioned have given me any money or given me any of this gear for free. I had to pay for it all myself. And there are no affiliate links under this video, so I'm not getting kickbacks. If you click a link and go through and buy something, you're gonna to have to go and search these products out for yourself. The only reason I share the gear that I use with you is so you can hear my why, the reason why I buy each of those little things and what they do for me and give me back. I have a very specific use case. I'm a street photographer, a portrait photographer, and a filmmaker, and that mix means this kit is right specifically for me. But you probably have a slightly different use case. And I've also made sacrifices and compromises, letting go a little bit of quality for the sake of getting back a little bit of lightness and portability in some of those items, and those might not be compromises you're willing to make. So you have to think those choices through for yourself. I know the danger in making videos like this is if you're a new photographer you might just think I'll just copy that exact thing but it's so important to think through your choices for yourself and I often get a lot of people on Instagram and YouTube saying hey I'm looking to buy a new camera do you think this camera is good or that camera is good should I buy this lens or that lens and I always refuse to give gear advice and there's very specific reasons for that which I think it might be good to get into quickly the first reason is I'm not a very techy guy there are loads of channels out there that do the tech stuff ask them, they know much better than me, they understand all the specs of the different cameras, it's on the top of their head, they know what camera companies are about to bring out or what lenses do what for what things. I really just choose the stuff that I can afford and I make compromises and I get back to work. That's my mentality. I'm the wrong guy to ask about which camera to buy. The second reason is, and you'll know this if you spend any time around this channel, is I don't believe the specific camera you use actually makes you a better photographer automatically. I believe choosing the right tool for the job is important but there are many many tools available to you that would be the right tool and that comes down to specific use case again but I would rather that instead of you dropping a ton of money on a camera that you think is going to make you better but then you leave that camera in the cupboard or don't take it out too often because it's so precious you don't want to scratch it get a rubbish camera that makes you want to go out and shoot every day because it just frees you up and you're not too worried about it because the act of shooting is going to make you a better photographer much faster than buying a fancy camera. And the last is, like I said, I don't know your use case. I don't know you. I don't know what you're trying to shoot. And to give you any advice about what the right tool might be for you, I need to know what's your subject matter. How do you like to shoot that subject matter? And it's just too much to get into one-on-one -on -one in comment sections. I mean, for example, my favorite lens at the moment, the one that I use the most often is, like I said, this little cheap plastic 35 mil Samyang lens. I mean, I can't tell you all to go out and get this because this is very, very specific to me, but it works for me. I shoot 35 mostly on the street and it's plenty sharp for what I need. It's low profile and lightweight, so it's perfect for my very specific use case. I had so much blowback on that video where I switched over to Sony because people were going, oh, you're telling us to switch over to Sony. I'm absolutely not. In fact, my very specific use case meant that I moved to Sony because if I only shot stills, I probably would have switched to Fuji at the time because I really like what Fuji were doing and I would have taken a, a cheeky look at that medium format camera which looks absolutely beautiful and somewhere in that mix might have been the right choice but because I am equally a photographer and a filmmaker, Sony was the right choice for my very specific use case. You have to think about the things that you do and what's the right tool to get that done and no one can help you do that unless they sit and take a lot of time with you. So all I'd say is you have to take responsibility for your gear choices. Don't put them off to someone else, don't be misled led by someone's gear recommendations in a video. Listen to why they're choosing what they choose. Don't just copy their choices. Then go back on a piece of paper, write down what you do and how you do it, and go back and look for honestly the best tool that you can afford. Who cares what the brand name is on the front of the camera? Get the thing that is gonna get you back to creating as much as possible, as often as possible, because that will make you a better photographer fast. I just want to say thank you so much to all of you who bought the book this year. I'm blown away. It's middle of March and Collection 2 is already sold out. Last year it took till October to sell way less and this year you've cleaned me out by middle of March which I'm very, very grateful for. It goes a huge way to supporting me. I will be ordering more copies next year but every year it will be a limited run so you need to jump on and grab them while they're available. And thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you need a new website or a domain or even an online store, they're a fantastic option 
collection. I've used them myself for years now. And like I say, you've cleaned me out of books this year, but it's been really, really easy with Squarespace as a store. I mean, I'm able to keep track of stock. I can see when orders are coming in. I can send you notifications to let you know when I've shipped. And for me, who's terrified of that sort of admin, it really, really couldn't have been easier. So if you're looking to load up a portfolio site or get information about yourself online and present it nice and cleanly in good design, or even put up a store, definitely check them out as an option. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com forward slash Sean Tucker to get 10% off your first purchase.